Let's talk a minute about the iMac G3 and then we'll get into our next project. So the iMac G3 is a machine that I picked up from the same gentleman I bought the LC2 from. In fact, he tried to sell it to me when I bought the LC2, but I wasn't willing to pay, you know, what he was asking. Um, it does have the original box, but it's missing all but one piece of packing material. So the box is kind of worthless. I'm probably not going to keep the box. Um, almost, yeah, I'm going to probably throw that away. Um, I have no room for it, dude. So, so I bought the, uh, the, the iMac G3. I paid $50 for it, and he threw in a bunch of other stuff. And I was like, all right, you know what? That's reasonable to me. Um, I bring it home, and I promised him that I would erase the hard drive and reinstall the OS from scratch. He didn't have the CDs to restore it from, and I said I would do it for him. It was something he, he begged me to do that, and I'm like, all right, no, no problem, no problem. So I bring it home. <laughs> I boot it off of a Mac OS 9 CD. Now, let's, talk, let's go back a little bit. This is a Revision B. So the iMac Revision A was only out for like two months. Uh, from the launch of in, in August of 98 to October. In October, the Revision B was released. It had uh, better graphics and a ton of uh, <clears throat> other improvements. So, anyway, so I, I, I booted off of a Mac OS 9 CD that I have, and the first thing I did was I erased the hard drive to prepare it for the new OS. And then I go to install Mac OS 9. I mean, sorry, Mac OS, yeah, Mac OS 9. And it said, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> your firmware is outdated. You might want to update the firmware. Oh, but that's not a problem. There's a folder on the CD. Just go ahead and run the firmware updater and you'll be all good. I'm like, all right, awesome. This is going to be a good day. So I go to, a, I launch the firmware update utility and then it says, oh, oh, yeah, you know, you know what? Um, no, we, we can't do this right now. See, you got to run the utility from a boot volume that is writable. Just go ahead and restart the machine, launch the launch, launch me when you uh, restart the machine, and I'll, I'll make sure that uh, we'll start the process to update the firmware. At that point, my heart sank. I'm like, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I can't do that now because I don't have an OS on the, on, on the hard drive anymore. What do I do? I'm like, you know, all right, okay, this sucks. Why don't I just go ahead and download a copy of Mac OS 8 offline? I don't have a copy physically anymore. I used to, but I don't have it. And I'll just go to the internet, I'll download an image, I'll burn a CD, no big deal. So I do that. I burned a copy of Mac OS 8 one and it didn't work it burned it contained all the stuff but it wouldn't boot off of it i'm like well oh, oh or maybe it's a bad image so i tried another version of it, another image didn't work and then the third one i think i tried it actually booted mac os 8 1 booted right up to the installer go to run the installer we're sorry, your Mac is too new. This Mac requires a newer version of Mac OS. We're sorry. I'm like, what the hell? So, I, all right, I, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna scream. So, no, no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. Calm down. Went back on the interweb and I downloaded an image for Mac OS 8.6. Mac OS 8.6, what could possibly go wrong, right? The third image I downloaded, because the first two didn't work, I found a third copy of the retail installer, burn a CD, boot it up, it booted, good, awesome, start the installer. Well, okay, at this point, it says, we're sorry, your firmware needs to be updated. Please run the installer from the CD. It's included, here it is, do it, and you'll be fine. So if you're following along, we're back to square one. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, okay, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. It wants a specific version of macOS. 
So why don't we try Mac OS 8, uh, I think I did 8.5, Mac OS 8.5. So we're going from Mac OS 8.1 to 8.6, back to 8.5. No big deal, here's an image, download it. The first two images didn't work, just as the previous. Not everything works like you want it to sometimes. So anyway, by the time I, I found the third image of 8.5 installer, retail copy by the way, I'm not using specific Mac installers. You can't do that unless it's specific to that machine. I downloaded it, I burned it, I booted it, and, and we're sorry, but this Mac requires a later version of Mac OS. At that point, <laughs> at that point, Oh my God, at that point, I'm like, what? I don't want to swear on my channel because I get bitched at all the time for it. But I'm just going to say it. What the fuck? So, I went online again, and I downloaded an image for Mac OS 851. 851. Download it. Burn the CD. Verification completed, looks good, everything's great, go to boot it, and it won't boot. The image is bad, or not bootable, or something, and I'm going to scream. I'm going to throw this iMac on the side of Route 93, Interstate 93. <laughs> not going to really do that. But I am stuck between a rock and a hard place. And I, know where, I don't know where to go. So... As a last-ditch effort, uh, I scoured the internet, I scoured eBay, and I purchased a retail copy of Mac OS 851. If that does not work, if that doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. There are options. I'm going to pull the drive out, maybe, and uh, get an external um, IDE enclosure plug it into one of my Macs that will support it and just copy a working system folder onto the drive. I'll, I'll find one. It may not be an English one. It might be in German, but I will find one and I'll boot it and then I will go ahead and run the firmware update. But if that doesn't work, boy, oh boy, oh boy. We have a lot more to discuss with the iMac in our next video uh, once I get the thing running again. Um, really, that's the only thing holding me back right now. I should have the new OS next week. But let's talk about something that I'm going to work on in the meantime. Most of you will recognize this machine. This is my LC2, right? No, it's not. Not anymore. This is my LC3. So the LC2 project started out when I bought an LC2 from a gentleman off Craigslist, the same guy I bought the iMac from. I brought it home, I found that it had leaking caps, so I recapped the entire board, I cleaned the board, I got all the little weird issues sorted out, I put a bigger hard drive in it, got it fully booted, all my software popped on there, things running great, but the microphone doesn't work, and the machine is slow as hell. The LC2, for those of you who don't know, uh, is a basically a 32-bit processor crammed onto a 16-bit motherboard. Um, everything on the board is 16-bit, but 32-bit processor, so it was crippled deliberately from the factory because Apple. Um, yes, Apple has been Apple since Apple's been Apple. Um, they, they just do things to piss people off, and it's just what they do. They thrive at uh, mindless bureaucracy even to this very day. It's what makes them cool, I guess. Anyway, so this is an LC3 that I got from a viewer who sent it to me for free, which was very nice. Sent it to me, no charge, no shipping or anything. Um, and uh, I, I don't know his actual YouTube name, so I can't plug his channel right now, but if I figure it out, I'll let you know. Uh, if, if it's you and you're watching this, uh, comment on the, on the thingy and put your stuff down there. I'll, I'll pin the comment when I see it. So, um, so this unit here, came in it's it's been repaired i've already gone through this machine so this is the hard drive from the lc2 the floppy drive and the power supply and fan from the lc2 they're all in better condition um 
but this is an LC3 chassis, which is identical to the LC2 in almost every way. We've got an LC3 logic board. I have had to make some repairs. So the hard drive that came with this suffers from the, um, the, the dissolved rubber bushing problem that affected almost every Quantum Pro drive ever made. It was an 80 megabyte drive, but using some tips that I got from the Tech Knight, uh, I think I might have a way of saving the drive um, and preserving it because these drives, these SCSI drives are getting hard to find. What we're using in here is an IBM drive. I found the IBMs to be not only quieter, but they also seem to be more reliable. So a little side note there. So the repairs I've had to make to this machine mostly are limited to capacitor um, uh, replacement. This motherboard had every capacitor on this board was leaking, uh, some more than others. I remember that, uh, I think it was C18 here, had some corrosion built up around it. So the machine would start up, but it would, it would, it would start up and then it would reset, its, it would restart on its own. It took like maybe a couple, about a minute or so for it to actually come up to a um, to an image on the display. So there were serious problems here. Um, you know, it, I didn't try to boot it from a working OS. I I booted it from the LC2's drive, um, which would at least get me to a point where it said that it didn't have the right system enablers, and it legitimately didn't. So um, at least I knew the machine was somewhat viable. I thought I could save it. So I took the board out and I recapped it. Every one of these new, every one of these has been replaced. I cleaned the board with electronics cleaner, and so far it's running great. Um, I had one problem though. <clears throat> I tore the pad off of one one cap. This one right here, what number is C13? I had one pad tear off. Um, in fact, I gotta I gotta secure this to the board in just a second. It's not that well secured. Um, so. I had a pad tear off, so I looked at the situation and I thought it over and I realized that the best solution in this case was to tear off the other pad and resituate the capacitor so that it soldered directly to the, um, these are little um, posts that are, that actually go through the board. They go from one side all the way down to the other, so they're pretty secure. So I soldered the cap to the posts. All I had to do was rotate it um, almost completely around, but it works. It's Everything on this machine is working right now, so that's what I did. And what I'm going to do to better secure this to the board, it's a little wobbly. Don't worry, it's well connected. I'm going to take some hot glue, and I'm going to put a dot here and a dot right there. And that will permanently secure it to the board. In fact, some factories use hot glue to secure certain components together anyway, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, other than that, the cap job went very smoothly, and I tried it without using flux, and it wasn't, I wasn't as happy with the job. The flux, I, you know, I, I use flux uh, to recap boards, and I got some flack for this from one of my coworkers. He's like, you don't need all that flux. <laughs> We make fun of each other. It's all, it's all good. Um, I'm like, what do you mean? It, it, it really does help. And it does. What the flux really does for you is it helps to distribute the heat more evenly. Um, and and, and that was, that's the truth. Another thing I noticed, so, so yeah, when I, when I did this without the flux, it didn't go as smoothly, but it, it, it wasn't necessary. You're right. It's not necessary, but it was smoother with the flux. Now, one other thing. I noticed that the solder on this board melted a little bit differently than what I'm used to. Um, I believe that at this point, Apple had started using lead-free solder uh, because the solder melts at the consistency of lead-free solder, which is it melts very, it's not as smooth and it's not as predictable. Um, it's not as clean. So I think that this is lead-free lead solder on this board, which is what makes it a little bit different. But it, it was all good. Everything is good. So I'm going to start off, but we're going to we're going to tack this down with some some hot melt glue. Just put a little bit on either side, just to make sure that it doesn't get bumped or shifted. Now we're also going to do one more thing. I swear to God, if it wasn't for my viewers, I wouldn't have a channel at all. And the Tech Knight delivered again. He sent me two brand new 
in package Farallon Ethernet adapters. And I'm going to put one of these in the LC575 just because. I don't need to put it there, but I'm just going to put it there because I can. And, uh, and in another point, another point in time, we're going to recap the power supply. I know this is a problem. The Tech Knight, once again, reminded me of it. Um, this is uh, the cap issues have not been limited to the motherboards on these, but these TDK power supplies are also known for cap failures. These are easy to do. There's all surface mount, and uh, I'm surface mount. They're through hole. This job can be banged out in about five minutes, so I'm not worried about that. And there's also a list of caps needed on I think it's uh, matcaps.com. They have a whole list of what you need to buy, and I'll and I'll and I'll get that. Another side note, I didn't have to buy any caps for this machine because I had done so many Macs recently. I've done three logic boards uh, recently. Uh, let's see, the, the LC575, the LC2, the Mac Classic, and I did my uh, PowerBook one, uh, 160 LCD display. So I've done so many cap jobs lately that I had enough on hand to, to complete the job. While we're waiting uh, for the uh, hot melt gun to heat up, I want to show you the peripherals that I kind of went through here. This is the um, the original hockey puck style mouse for the uh, iMac. You'll notice it does not have a divot. That's how you know you have an original. The later versions had a little divot uh, on the button here, so you could tell what direction it was in. Yes, the design was so bad that this mouse went down in history as being the worst mouse ever designed. And um, I've gone ahead and torn this thing apart and cleaned it thoroughly inside. And it looks like a brand new mouse. Another way you can tell you have an original, and I'll, re, I'll, I'll probably mention this in the next uh, iMac video, but the original mouse ball was an aquamarine in white color, like that, cut in half. So. I also took this keyboard, took this apart, cleaned every single key by hand, and it looks beautiful. This is uh, this is the original style keyboard, and this one has been fully cleaned. Uh, this is also uh, one of the worst keyboards ever made up to that point. Don't worry, Apple made them far worse in later years. In fact, we're dealing with that with the Mac uh, MacBook Pro today. So, I swear to God, with Apple, you know their their corporate motto, their their. Um, I believe Apple's mission statement is as follows. If it has not been over-engineered, but can be, we will over-engineer it. If it has not been over-styled and could be, we will over-style it. For we are Apple. We take no prisoners. Lewis Rossman would not approve of this. <laughs> Look, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna clean up all the two strings, don't worry. There we go. And that's just to secure it. Remember, this cap is mounted not to its original pads, but to the adjacent um, there is a name for those. I want to say rivets, but they're um, they're posts, or conducting posts that go straight through the board, and they are secure. But uh, they were never designed to support any components. Um, you rip a post out on a multi-layer board, and you're screwed. But these are only two-layer boards. There's nothing in the middle, as far as I know. Yeah, there are some boards that are actually three or four layers thick. Uh, so that means you've got printed material in between layers. Uh, that's not the case here. But this cap is now fully secured. It will not be a problem ever. And like I said, I did test to make sure that all the subcomponents and uh, everything works. We've got sound. We've got SCSI. Um, we've got microphone. We've got everything. Everything is good. So, disc controllers. Everything's fine. So I, I did a, a passable job at 
correcting my little mistake there. But like I said, you, you want to secure that component to something so that it cannot be uh, jostled or ripped off easily. So right now we are at that point. Okay, that looks all right. I mean, hey, it's not beautiful, but you know, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and install our new Farallon Ethernet adapter. Okay, to install the adapter, you have to remove this little dummy plug, and I'm gonna save this because you can never find another one if you need it. It just snaps together like that. When I was in high school, we uh, we had a fleet of LC2s and LC3s. All of them had these Farallon adapters in them. So this isn't the first time I've seen one. But every single one had one of these. These cards date back to about 1991, 92 or so. There we go. And that's it. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't screw in or anything. It just sits there. I have a new battery, um, but I'm going to bring it in. Here, I have one at work. I'll, I'll just pop that in when it comes, or when I go back to work next time, which will be Monday. So on Monday, I'll bring a battery over to my house, and we'll pop it in. We'll, get, we'll have a working battery. But for now, let's, uh, let's put it back together. I want to point out the, the condition that this chassis is in is phenomenal. This has no yellowing at all. So I don't even have to retrobrite this. I was not expecting to receive a, such a clean chassis for nothing. I did not expect that. I was impressed. And all I did was I cleaned up the uh, the cover a little bit, make it look, you know, nice and presentable. And one of the little tricks that I have uh, for these things is what I'll do is uh, once I clean it and buff it up a little bit with a magic eraser, which helps to um, clean it up a little nicer, deep cleans it. What I'll then do is I will treat it with, um, I use Mother's Interior Surface Protectant, this stuff here. It's for plastic, vinyl, and rubber. And it helps to bring the shine back. And then we'll just clip this back on and bring it upstairs. Now let's go ahead and start up the LC3. Then we'll install the Farallon driver. As for the other card, like I said, I'm going to put it in the LC575. So now the machine boots up almost instantly, uh, whereas prior to repairing the leaking caps, it kind of hung up a little bit, and then it would kind of get weird. So <laughs> let's uh, boot it up. The LC3 is, if you're going to buy one of the LCs, the LC3 is the one you want. And the LC3 came in two flavors. You had the classic LC, LC2 style case, and there was a slightly modernized version that they had made um, towards the very end of the LC3's production cycle. The more modernized version, it just had a smoother face and sides, and it was supposed to resemble the uh, upcoming generation of Max. Think Performa 630-ish. And there were a few other models that uh, they kind of mimicked. So I'm going to mount the camera on the tripod so I don't have to hold it anymore, and then we'll, um, we'll install this. So when I, was, um, when I was a high school kid, I went to this uh, very progressive, very liberal high school. And when it was built in 1992, and or open for the 92-93 school year, they had um, a fleet of Macintosh LC series machines, some classics and a few other odds and ends. But it was mostly LC series uh, desktops like this one because they supported networking. It was, you, so networking a, um, a Mac Classic or a Classic 2 is a little more challenging, especially since they don't have the PDS slot. Um, so, well, anyway. The backbone of our network was provided by Digital Equipment Corporation. It was all based on digital equipment. Um, oh, I can't even. They were, yeah, the Deck Repeater series of Ethernet, uh, 10 base T Ethernet uh, switches. Hubs. I think they were hubs. I don't even think they were proper switches. Thanks. Well, anyway, there was a backbone. There were three backbones in the building three that I knew of. 
and uh, each one had a fully populated deck repeater, or fully populated with deck repeater eight port um, plug-in modules. It was a whole modular system. When I started working for the school district um, as a student, I actually was given an entire deck repeater setup, the back plane, and I think there were like eight or something uh, plug-in modules. So I had a total of some 50 some odd ports. I had this in my bedroom. And I also had a couple of these LC la uh, desktops that I had networked um, over Ethernet. It was, it, was, it, was a, it was a fun time. So, so we're going to now install the Farallon um, adapter driver. And again, we're going to do the same thing for the um, 575. And someday, I will probably link these together. Now, to link these two machines together, you will need to build a crossover Ethernet cable, but that's not a problem. You can still make them, you can still buy them. But that's what you would need a crossover for if you didn't have a switch or a hub. Or you could use a hub. But anyway, I don't have a hub. I do. I, I, I can make it work. I can make it work. I'm trying to remember what I used to use for equipment back then. It's been a while, you know. It's like I've... I've um, when you don't do something for so many years and you, you don't work with those systems anymore, you forget how to do things. At least that's my problem. So what do we got? We got a fully running LC3. Um, the system unit cost me nothing. Thank you very much for, for that. Um, you know who you are, and please comment so I have your proper channel name and I can refer you in the, to you in the future uh, when I'm making those uh, comments. But this thing runs beautiful. It's got 20 megabytes of RAM. I haven't even turned uh, virtual memory on, but I will. Just an amazing little machine. It's so fast, so much faster than the LC2. I can't even tell you. I mean, this thing is just incredible, fa incredibly fast in comparison. Let's launch. A, let's take a look at uh, one of our games here. What do we got here? I don't think Sim Tower will run because that's designed for. Um, uh, well, maybe it will. Let's, let's launch Sim Tower. Let's see if it runs. Put it in 256 color mode. Sim Tower is an addictive little game. Um, you have to build skyscrapers. So you start off with nothing, and then you have to, you know, you have to place the, the modular tower blocks. This one's, you know, this game is a little bit too hard to demonstrate over a quick YouTube video, so let's try something different. Let's try a game like, um, what do I got here? A uh, glider will run on anything. We don't want to use glider. Mario's Game Gallery. Oh, I'm so happy. Along with Presage, proudly presente. Mario's Game of Gallery. Mario's a Game of Gallery. That was pretty close. There we go. Yeah, this thing's running great. How about Domino's? That's so racist. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. Yes, the microphone does work. I did test it earlier, so someone might comment on that. Does the microphone work? Yes, it does. Yes, we can. Um, here we go. New game. I'm really enjoy playing with you. I'm gonna go first. So I think I need I need to do this. Is that how this works? Oh boy. It's a 
My turn now. Hmm. Anyway, so that's that. LC3. Yeah, I would avoid the LC2 and the LC unless you really have a connection or, or a connection. You It's either all you can find or if you have some, you know, you had one as a kid and you want that particular model. I would highly recommend springing for the LC3 if you can find one. I got lucky. I got everything I needed accessory or peripheral wise with the LC2 but I ended up with an LC3 in the end and I'm and I couldn't be happier so oh yeah we've got of course I got After Dark on here so this thing is so fast I'm, I'm telling you guys this thing is quick if you compare it to an LC2 it's almost double the speed amazing all right well that's going to conclude our video for now if you guys want to stay tuned and watch me install that, uh, that Farallone card for the, um, the 575, I will videotape that too. Oh yeah, along with that iMac, I also got myself a Global Village uh, bronze. Nope, it's a gold uh, modem. And I forget what speed the gold was. I know the bronze was like 33.6, or no, 14.4. The gold might be a 33.6 or possibly even a 28.8. So we're going to rotate the machine over a little bit and we're going to disconnect everything from the motherboard tray. We'll flip the power switch off for good luck. There we go. And then we're going to need to unscrew the back cover. Little fun thing to, to, uh, to, to mention here. So the guy that I got all this stuff from um, locally, I paid him some good money for it too. Um, he sold me the LC2 for 75 bucks, and I got the iMac for 50 I know that's, yeah, it's a little bit on the high side for something like this in, in, in some cases. If you're not buying from a real collector, that can be a bit much, but if you're not always getting collector-grade stuff for that price, but whatever. Um, he, he actually had one of these uh, 575s sitting in the corner of his basement. Um, and he had, um, there were parts all around it, just like, he did like, it's like he had gone completely um, brutal on the stupid thing. He tore the motherboard out, he took the, um, the drives out of it, and he took some other stuff. And I asked him, where did you put all those parts? Do you still have them? Because he had just done it before I showed up. And he's like, oh, oh, I just threw it all away. I'm like, well, where's the back door cover thingy? He's like, oh, I threw that away too. And I looked at him and I said, you know, I just want you to know that the going rate for that back cover alone, and you could sell it, no problem, is around $75. He, he's like, um, what? <laughs> yeah, those back doors are expensive if you can find them. People are replacing them if the, if the tabs are broken off they're replacing the whole door any any collector who has one will do that he couldn't believe it i'm like yeah that's life anyway okay so i got my uh my motherboard here and we're going to just go and oh yeah i want to before i do that i want to show you i did recap this board too i did this uh on may 6th 6th I can't say that word anymore for some reason. Anyway, I replaced all the caps on this one too. So we've got these two. There's not not a lot on this board, um, but after I did this, I had some. Um, let's take a look at the 575's logic board. This one too has received the wrath of of my soldering iron. So this one, this system had been uh, acting up pretty weirdly about a month ago. What it would do is, when, uh, over the past year, it started developing some stability problems. It would randomly freeze and crash. And then all of a sudden, about a month ago, the floppy drive stopped working. I'm like, well, that's weird. I, it, wouldn't even, it wouldn't even try to read. You put a disk in, nothing happens. And then it started to get progressively worse. The, uh, the SCSI controller started to malfunction. Um, I wouldn't be able to boot the machine with a SCSI drive connected at all. And it was just weird things happening with this thing, you know, just, just randomness. Anyway, 
what ended up happening was I took the board out and I took the board out, looked it over, and there was electrolyte pooled. You can actually still see some of the after effects of it, but there's a little bit of uh, corrosion in some areas here from the electrolyte that had spilled uh, from these caps. And um, so I, again, cleaned the board, took the caps, replaced them all, and all of those weird problems are gone. I think one of the underlying uh, points of, of these this later, later series of videos that I've been making with these Macs is I'm trying to make sure to get the message across to people who own classic Macintoshes that weird problems can occur if your capacitors are going bad. In fact, um, it all started years ago with the Macintosh Classics and Classic 2s having nothing but problems, mostly related to um, the checkerboard pattern on startup. And it stemmed, it, 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 it turned into a lot of Mac Classic owners running their motherboards through a dishwasher, which can temporarily cure the problem. But again, with capacitors failing, there are two problems, in fact, not just one. Number one, you have electrolyte, which is conductive, leaking all over your board. And number two, your capacitor is starting to uh, drift in value. And both of those can cause problems uh, in outright system failure. So let's go ahead and put this card in to our, uh, I believe this is a PDS slot, that's what they call that. Does it actually say that? Yeah, it's not new bus. I think it's just a P the LC PDS slot. So I'm going to just shift my battery over and plump it down. There we go. And now we have to remove the, the uh, dummy plug. So we're going to take the dummy plug off of the back cover, just as we did with the LC. There we go. And I may have referred to this machine as an LC575, but it's actually a Performa. My bad. I, I have, it's permanently, the two, the two names are merged in my brain permanently. I can't fix that. All right, now we're going to slide our board back in. So I think what I'm going to do now that I have two vintage Macs that are capable of running Doom, I might do a network session. I have another uh, friend of mine, a really good friend of mine who's a Mac enthusiast as well. Uh, he owns the, um, the uh, 20th anniversary Mac that I did a video of a while back. And he seemed interested in the idea of doing a, a gaming session with our vintage Macs. So either We've got a 680-30, and we've got a, uh, a 680-40, so. So, I just spent a considerable amount of time working on this Mac, trying to improve the uh, CRT's condition, and I think I did a decent job. Um, the thing with these aging CRT's is they at some point, they will need some attention, uh, be it capacitors or drifting values in resistors in the high voltage circuitry. This one displays a very crisp and clear image, uh, but it wasn't easy getting it to that point. I spent a lot of time tweaking potentiometers um, all over the damn thing to get it to look this good. Uh, I do not have the software that Apple released for that purpose. Um, using the trackball at this point here. It's a nice trackball. Even has the custom marble bowling ball looking uh, track ball ball. <laughs> so apparently my clock is not set. Well, all right then. I'll have to fix that. I don't recall disconnecting the battery at any point, but. Uh, Maybe I did. Let's get our Farallon uh, floppy disk in there and we'll get the driver installed. And maybe in a future video I will set up an Apple file share network. Mm 
I'm not sure I like this trackball though. Yeah, not my thing. You know, you want you think about it though. You could almost put one of these computers back in daily service. As long as the internet isn't that important to you. You could you could you could literally use a vintage computer as a daily driver uh, if you're using it for, you know, desktop publication. What I mean is making um, you know, calendars, flyers, banners, things like that. Uh, you could use it for word processing, gaming. As long as you don't really need internet access, because the modern internet obviously isn't friendly to machines that are pushing 30 years old. But there's nothing to stop you from not uh, or from connecting to BBSs, and um, as long as you have a an ability to dial out through either a physical phone line or virtual one. I actually kind of like the trackball. It's not too bad. I'm going to get used to it though. It's been a while since I've used one. So we've got the Farallon adapter installed. Now does that create a control panel item or what? Let's see. Got to turn on file sharing and all that, but um, network. There it is, EtherTalk. Ah. Yeah, it's working. It's there. Um, so if I had another device to plug in, I would. It would. It would actually. It would literally work. It would function. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you, Tech Knight, for those. Uh, I appreciate that. You actually are the sponsor of this video, so check out the Tech Knight uh, on YouTube. He's a. He's a great guy. Um, he's helped me over the years many times with different projects by supplying me with rare parts that I don't have and can't buy locally. Um, he has been uh, very supportive of this channel over the years, and I've even met him in person in Ohio uh, when I was at Hamvention 2013. Um, he showed up at, at the booth that I was working and, um, and introduced himself, and, and he's been a great guy. He actually helped me find the compact... LTE 5280 that I've got um, at that same convention there was a flea market and he, um, he, he clued me in on where I could find some uh, cool, cool retro computers a little story about that uh, he also told me about a Toshiba Libretto that was for sale and I found it, I tracked the guy down at that flea market and he wouldn't sell it he didn't. He he claimed it was his friends, and he wouldn't sell it. But I'm like, I have cash in my hand. I want it. I don't know. I don't know if I can sell that thing. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but I am not gonna play games with you. So I ended up buying the uh, Compaq LTE 5280, thanks to another chip that he gave me. Great guy. Great guy. Um, so. Yeah, he, he provided me with the LC1 logic board that I pulled parts off of. He supplied me with these two Farallon adapters. Um, what else? He gave me the, uh, the tailless mouse. <laughs> and he was going to sell me parts for the compact that I, had been look that I had been looking for at the time, and I ended up buying them from, from someone else, but... Uh, only because this other person was offering me a complete system, so I bought that instead. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and this has been fun. Stay tuned for more Mac fun. I've got this iMac sitting next to me that I need to get running again, and hopefully the CD that I bought will solve that problem. But for now, the LC3 is good to go. I just need to get a clock battery for it. I've got some at work. No big deal. Performa 575 is happy as a clam, and so is its owner. Let's keep these retro fires burning, guys. It's not easy sometimes, but you know, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta do things that uh, you gotta stretch your brain and stretch your imagination. 
like for example aligning a freaking CRT without any guides or tools or anything and that, that's that's the challenge I, but it, it looks perfect to me right now it looks absolutely perfect just hope it stays that way okay I'm out bye